Welcome to worship today. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? It is a great day to be together. It's a great day to praise God. It's a great day to feel the presence of God. And thank you so much to John and Betty for helping us to just enter into that sense of worship with such beautiful music. Week in and week out, don't they do an amazing job? I know that we usually leave our announcements to the very end, but there's going to be a method to my madness on this one. Uh, we have been talking about ordering our God's Work, Our Hands t-shirts. These shirts, this isn't mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> these shirts we wear when there's a congregational event, when we're out on the streets with clean streets, when we're doing something in the community to help people know who we are and to increase our visibility in the community. It starts up conversations and enables us to um, have outreach conversations with people and to address them. What? Mary wants me to show that. Which says our church name, St. Luke Lutheran Church. Um, so, anyway, um, the reason I'm making this announcement at the beginning of the service is um, I'm going to be starting two clipboards with order forms and asking you all to just pass them during the worship service over the course of the time so that everyone who would like to place an order can do that. Um, it will be another week or two before we actually send the orders in and then probably several weeks before we get the orders. So if that has any bearing on whether you order a short sleeve t-shirt, a long sleeve t-shirt, or a hoodie, that, that information is available. So it'll be a while before we actually get them. Sorry? Joy has one of each for whatever the weather, whatever the situation, and because sometimes she comes several days back to back and works at the church, and you've got to have a clean one available, you know, just to keep up the image. So, Anyway, um, you're invited to uh, put your details of what you would like on that order form. No money will be collected today. We'll be collecting that when we receive the t-shirts. The general t-shirt cost is $10 to $15, the hoodie cost is closer to $25. We won't know the exact price until we um, incorporate the shipping with the total amount, but that'll give you in the neighborhood of 10 to probably 25 or so. Yeah, there's pictures of Yes, there are, on the clipboards, there are pictures of each of the items. There's information about what they're made from and if you need that detail and, um, any, any questions you have are probably on the information sheets on the clipboards. Okay, <clears throat> enough for announcements. We are here to worship God. We are here to be the people of God, to be fed as the people of God, to be inspired and renewed as the people of God, and God is here in this place with us. So, let go of anything else for the next hour that you have on your mind and just let yourself receive the gift of being in the presence of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. 
For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, The former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. Receive God's forgiveness, God's mercy, and God's love. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Live free and new. Amen. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn. Without you, we strive but accomplish little good that lasts. Help us to see and understand the things you would have us do, and give us grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. First lesson this morning is from Deuteronomy, starting with the 30th chapter. Moses said to the people, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And by the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Word of God, word of life. The psalm is Psalm 119, and we'll read responsively. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who follow the teaching of the Lord. who never do any wrong, but always walk in your ways. You lay down your commandments, that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be ashamed, but I regard all your commandments. 
I will thank you with a true heart when I have teamed your right or learned your righteous judgments. The second lesson is from the second or third chapter of Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you are not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives growth. The one who plants, the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. of Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, You have heard it said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering, offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, Cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, 
You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Got real, real, real fast, didn't it? It's that scripture lesson for today. Well, hold on. Buckle up. It's going to go faster. Have you ever heard of the rule of thumb? It was a legal practice in England and in the United States from the very beginning of the original 13 colonies. The rule of thumb stated that it was legal for a man to beat his wife as much as he wanted as long as the branch of the switch he used wasn't any bigger around than the size of the man's thumb, according to the man. So, just a little pre-hint. This next question is not going to be a rhetorical question. It's going to be looking for an answer. So if I were to say to you, in light of what I just said, that I was super excited to hear that the rule of thumb had been amended, and now it is the rule of the pinky finger. What would you think? Just no. Right. We would have an immediate, intuitive understanding that that teaching had nothing to do with switches, wouldn't we? We would instinctively know that it is about the value of human life. We would instinctively know that it is about what causes human life to thrive in community. It would be something that we would clearly understand is another way of saying no one should ever be beaten to begin with and no one should ever beat another person, right? We would instinctively and immediately and intuitively know that it has nothing to do with the size of switches, right? Okay, keep that firmly in your head as we go into the rest of this scripture passage. The example that I used isn't about the size of a branch or who cuts one or who doesn't. If I said to you in my most Jesus-like voice, you have heard it said that the pinky size rule now applies to beatings. But I say to you, Anyone who is caught cutting a switch is liable in the kingdom of heaven. You would know it wasn't about switches, right? Right? The example about the size of the branches and who cuts them doesn't matter. All that matters is that instinctive, intuitive understanding that we already know what matters in this context 
is something far bigger and far greater and far more impactful than any one circumstance of abuse. So I want us to be really clear about what we hear before we hear it again. In the teaching that Jesus has today, there's two parts. The statement that begins, you have heard it said, that part of the teaching is shining a light on what has already become an accommodation to lesser values, right? To a worldview that has little or nothing to do with the kingdom of God. You've heard it said that the pinky finger rule now applies is a perfect example of an already accommodated value, normalizing abuse, right? So that's the part of us that instinctively knows that can't possibly be what it's about. That part of the teaching isn't lifting up what is normal. It's exposing, I'm sorry, it's exposing it as something that has already become normalized, but is in fact an example of human sin and brokenness. It's a spotlight. And then on the other side of the teaching equation, the but I say to you part is an invitation to give up that lesser worldview and take hold of God's worldview. It's a full stop and a hand outreached saying you can let go of that lower level of thinking and it will be good for you. You can do away with cozying up to that paltry version, that sinful example of accommodation because it is those assumptions of normalizing something that is much less than what God wants for us. That is exactly what Jesus wants to free us from, wants to liberate us from. As much as hearing this scripture today might have felt unsettling initially, I want you to understand that what's happening in it is Jesus is trying to offer greater freedom and a worldview, a mindset that is kingdom-oriented. You've heard it said, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't swear by any power. He's referencing the Old Testament, the commandments, the prophets. We know that. But I say to you, catch a glimpse of the world as God wants it for you and live toward that. The law that he's referencing is there because when it's followed, it's life-giving. But it's all so much more than a, a bunch of checklists of do's and don'ts. And Jesus, when he's doing today, is almost launching this groundbreaking preaching of liberation. Remember, we're early in Matthew. He's been born, baptized, he started to heal people, he started to explain that that when people are seeing this healing and seeing this transformation, that this is the kingdom of God coming near. Remember, this is the kingdom of God. Repent, it's right here, it's right here. And today he starts this preaching that says there is so much more for you. Jesus wants us to embrace a broader, deeper, wider, more loving standard of human life together for the sake of the whole community, for the sake of building up God's kingdom. And he uses some hard words, and he addresses some hard issues. And I'm guessing that there's not likely many of us who feel excused from some kind of accountability or conviction of one kind or another in hearing today's scriptures. 
we all share in all kinds of human brokenness. Whether it's our tendency to call the texter in the next lane a fool. You don't have to raise your hand. I'll just confess. Or whether we've been hurt badly enough to really wish someone dead. Whether we've been cheated on or whether we've cheated. No matter where we have been in life, this scripture, it's so important that we remember it's not about the size of the switch. The whole teaching is about Jesus inviting us to live our lives in God's presence in a broader, deeper, wider standard, the standard of God's kingdom. And when we first hear it, especially in English, today's gospel lesson sounds like judgments. But Jesus isn't the least bit interested in keeping score of who has or hasn't called someone a fool. He isn't pointing fingers at who has acted out of anger and who hasn't. Who has felt lust? Who has divorced or married a divorced person? or committed any of the acts listed here, because that would be focusing on the size of the switch. Do you get why that metaphor is important? Jesus is using the contrasts to describe the immense goodness of God, that he wants people to recognize and live into, to choose life like we hear in Deuteronomy. He wants us to have that same immediate, intuitive knowledge and conviction of God's standards that we had with the opening rule of thumb. Did you sit for a second and think, well, now maybe that pinky rule, that's not so bad. No, of course not. And Jesus wants us to have the same kind of whole person, intuitive understanding of what it means to live in the kingdom. So that any time, anything, abuse of any kind, or anything that tears down people, that takes the community to a lesser place, any time, anything that's less than the kingdom standard that we intuitively know it's not good enough, it feels wrong. He wants us to live so immersed in God's kingdom life that if something catches our attention or draws us away from that life, that when we realize it, we cut it out of our lives. It's not about cutting off your hand or ripping out your eye, literally, right? It's that he wants us to be so completely clear about living in God's standards and in God's ways that when anything pulls us away from that, we're clear about cutting it off. Anytime we're too attached in an unhealthy way to anything. Food, money, work, sex, adrenaline, working out, laying on the couch, shopping, social media, drugs, alcohol, status, reputation, our attitudes, our thinking, political apathy or cynicism, our expectations or beliefs about what other people should or shouldn't do, anything that gets in the way of us living in the fullness of God's kingdom, Jesus wants to free us from it. For the sake of something better. Not to point fingers at us and judge us and say, you're going to hell. Run, he says, to make things right with someone. If you have an unresolved issue, don't let it fester and diminish the vibrancy 
of your life in Christ. Yes, Jesus is saying the bar is so much higher, but it's also wider and richer. And that should catch our attention. Not because he's looking to judge our, for our sin, but because he wants to make it clear that in naming that full stop, he's handing his hand out and inviting us to let go of that, whatever that is, and live in the kingdom that is coming near, that he is bringing, and to be a part of us sharing in building that for everyone around us, rather than settling for the good enough default assumptions of the day. Jesus knows the things that tear us down. He knows our complicity. He knows how easily we get sucked into life-destroying situations and relationships. So here he is to us saying today, and I'm going to give you yet one last metaphor. It's as if Jesus were saying to us, I know how easy it can be for you to get used to accepting the level of beauty and wonder and joy and awe and purpose that you might get looking at an old, dusty, faded postcard of a dry riverbed. But I say to you, please, Live like your dining room lit window looks out over the Grand Canyon. The kingdom of God is here for you. Don't let anything block your view of it. If you need help, ask for it. Choose life, God's way. It will be better. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Inspire your church that it may be a sign of life throughout the world. From the exploration of faith with children and new believers to missionaries and bishops, the shaped lives of faithfulness 
so that all find abundant life in your ways. God of our broken world, nourish your creation. Accompany all who plant and water. Bless the work of farmers. Provide for substance farmers facing drought and climate change. Guide the work of agricultural scientists towards sustainable ways to feed the world. God of our broken world, give growth where there seems to be no hope for life. In nations and regions where reconciliation seems impossible, especially between Ukraine and Russia, empower peacemakers with your spirit. Be near to all whose lives have been wounded by the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, where death holds sway through disasters such as these. Through violence, disease, or hunger, equip relief workers to bring renewed hope. God of our broken world, bring healing to all who experience trauma caused by systems of injustice and destructive relationships. Give courage to those struggling to repent and those seeking reconciliation. Sustain all who work for restoration. Nurture all in need, especially the family of Kathy Chavez, a postal worker who lost her life in a horrific accident in the San Fernando Valley the morning of February 8th. Bo, a three or four year old boy for healing following renal cancer, cancer surgery and follow-up treatments. Prayers for family and friends of Rita Buckley as they grieve her death. Dana Kaminsky for healing from recurrent breast cancer. Duffy Walton for easy transition for him and his wife Lynn as he fights cancer. Jacob Kolau for family ongoing, for, and family for ongoing strength and healing. Owen Baker for healing from skin cancer and successful immunotherapy. Claudia Waite for healing from surgery to her left leg. Linda Kistler for healing from viral encephalopathy. Kim Scott for healing of stomach cancer. April Bryan for healing. Sue Ivanjack for healing of her stomach. For the friends and family of Teresa Fernald as they grieve her death. Bob Ivanjack for a full recovery for his shoulder. Jane and Mark Christensen as Jane awaits a heart transplant. Karen Gomez Perez, safety for her family. David Sanchez, hospitalized for liver disease. Kristen Lundeen and her family for a peaceful transition into God's eternal arms. God of our broken world. Help us to choose life. God of new futures, encourage this congregation. Call us to a common purpose and keep us from quarreling. Turn our hearts toward you and guide our leaders so that our choices may be life-giving for all. God of our broken world. For what else do the people of St. Luke pray? Thanks be to you for the lives of all who have died in Christ. Teach us to follow them in your ways and gather us with them into the promise of eternal life with you. You are the God of our broken world. We bring you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always.
Please be seated. Thank you so much for the ways that you have responded on the Sundays when we take a second offering, um, especially as we did last week uh, for the West Valley Food Pantry, and um, especially invite you to make note of the opportunities to support both the folks in Ukraine and all of the uh, suffering and recovery effort in Turkey and Syria. Um, if you go online, there is a form you can fill out if you want to make a direct donation. You can always put your donation to Lutheran World Relief or Lutheran Disaster Response in, um, in the pl offering plate and we will make sure it goes 100% to the places that you direct. Um, helping to alleviate suffering that is so dire right now. Uh, the council has talked about how fabulous it is that the number of COVID cases has once again really significantly receded. And um, so we're looking at starting to pass the offering plates probably next week. Um, and so don't be surprised if you see offering plates come by you. To, today you got a clipboard, sort of a trial run. <laughs> um, but we're going to go back to that uh, hopefully soon and then looking at perhaps next month going back to uh, serving communion in the ways that we are uh, after next month um, after March Easter time sorry my brain is catching up so right around Easter uh, maybe Palm Sunday or Easter looking at going back to sharing communion um, with actual bread and no packaging better for the environment, right? And perhaps more meaningful for our souls, I don't know. Maybe some people feel better either way, but. So those changes are coming, and, um, and we're so thankful that the in quality of our community life has been able to recover in the ways that it has. Um, I read recently that what happens now, though, is that it's still the, the elderly and those with immunocompromised systems who are still most at risk. So please feel free to wear a mask if you're comfortable doing that um, out of care and concern for the, those groups of people. And, um, and if not, that's fine too. But um, we're just, thanks be to God that, that the virus continues to die down. Let us thank God for our offerings and our, all the gracious gifts of God to us. <laughs> Liberating God. You break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all of your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We are blessed to have the choir singing our communion anthem this morning and especially grateful to John for conducting in Lisa's absence and uh, to David Primus for playing the oboe for us. Thank you in advance.
God's love and grace in this meal. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him, your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned into wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the faithful who gather around your life-giving table, with choirs of angels and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup, again gave thanks to God. He gave it to each one, saying, Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And together we commune one another. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The cup of salvation given for you. The cup of salvation given for you. Together we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We sing our sending hymn. It's a spiritual, I shall not be moved, but we've changed the words to make it, we shall not be moved. So we're singing it corporately and celebrating together our life together. We shall not be moved. Thank you. 
and receive the blessing, the God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcement. And just a heads up, we are um, in just a few short time uh, away from the beginning of the season of Lent and Ash Wednesday, so please mark your calendars to be here. We're going to do our Ash Wednesday worship service at noon this year in the hopes of being able to accommodate some people who don't, aren't able to come out at night. So plan for Ash Wednesday at noon and to receive your ashes if that's uh, something that you can make happen during your day. And starting the following week after Ash Wednesday, we will begin the Lenten Zoom Bible study. That is a continuation from our Advent Bible study. That will continue on um, in conjunction with Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Church, um, as I said, online by Zoom. And um, it will start the week after Ash Wednesday. Okay, go in peace, follow the way of Jesus.